Land Invest, one of my favorite companies. You came to Noah three years ago, I think. I think we were up there. Give us an update. Also, Unicorn, right? Well, yeah, we'll get on to that. Okay. <laughs> You're looking good, though, Marco. Straight Thank off you. the beach, it looks like. Um, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, thanks, Marco, for, for the invitation uh, this afternoon. It's great to have the opportunity to be back at, uh, at NOAA and, uh, and the opportunity to talk about our business. So I'm Christian Faze, uh, co-founder and CEO of Lend Invest, um, which is a business that I've been building with my co-founder for the last 11 years. Uh, I've only got 10 minutes, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about our business in terms of where we are today uh, and where we've come from. But then I'm also going to talk about um, some other metrics around our business that we often don't actually talk about that, that regularly. So, in terms of where we are today as a business, we are one of, if not, if not the largest non-bank mortgage lenders in the UK. But we're a hugely ambitious business, and really we aspire to be the biggest mortgage lender in the country. Uh, we've got a little way to go. Uh, we need to be 25 times bigger than what we are today, so we've got a task ahead of us, but we're 25 times bigger than what we were a few years ago, so we think this is achievable, and it's a medium-term goal for the business that we're going after. Now, in terms of the, the product set that we're currently in, uh, in the UK mortgage market at the moment, we're across the whole of the specialist mortgage market. Um, and we started in bridging finance, which is often perceived as being a small and fairly niche area of the market. Uh, it took us over four years to lend our first cumulative 50 million pounds. But actually, we think by starting small, that gave us the opportunity to, you know, to learn the market very intimately. It got to give us an opportunity to learn the asset class um, and to build the foundations for what is now a really scalable business. Moving from bridging finance, we walked into development finance. Um, we didn't walk, we started to run, I guess. Uh, we, uh, we took about a year and a half to lend our first cumulative 50 million pounds uh, in development finance. And then, in the recent years, we moved into buy-to-let. It was kind of a market, everyone said, so competitive, and we'll never be able to do it, but we have. Uh, and we're now gaining material market share across all of these products as we grow the business. And as we've grown the business, we've made a really big investment in technology. So about a third of our headcount uh, is in product and engineering. And we use um, technology really in three ways. So uh, we use technology to create a better or superior experience for our customers, our customers being brokers, borrowers, and also investors. And we use technology to drive core efficiencies through our business. And we actually use it to operate what is actually an entirely unique business model in our market, matching a wide array of investors uh, with the loans that, that we originate. Now, I guess in a world and in a market where everyone claims to be or everyone wants to be a technology business, I guess for us, we ask two questions. What does technology do for us as a business and how can we prove it? So one metric I like to look at is our headcount uh, and the way technology has allowed us to drive core efficiencies through our business. So uh, if we look at our nearest competitor, whilst we don't have, uh, you know, this competitor is not necessarily in the breadth of products that we have, The nearest competitor, lending a little over a billion pounds a year, has 650 people in their business, over 650. And actually, many of our competitors have significantly more people than that. Now, we'll lend over a billion pounds this year with about 220 people in our business. So an extremely efficient platform. And then if we look at customer satisfaction, um, 65% of borrowers that we lent to last year, we had lent to before. Um, and increasingly, customers are coming back to us quicker and quicker. This property entrepreneur, which is our target customer, they transact regularly and they like dealing with us. Uh, and we have a slightly different uh, model to a lot, of sort of, a lot of other fintech sort of lending platforms out there in that we make money on every loan that we do, uh, including the first one. Um, and if we look at the sort of lifetime value of our customer, We estimate on our short-term loan book, across a five-year time horizon, it's about £300,000 per customer. Now, to put that into context, we spent less than a million pounds in marketing across our whole business last year. So this is really a technology and service-driven proposition, and not one that's purely fueled by marketing spend. And if we look at the, the investor side of our platform, we've assembled a huge array 
of investors that now actively buy loans on our, on our platform. Um, we have the most diverse funding base of any mortgage lender in the market by a long margin, uh, both in terms of type of investor, but also geographical diversity. We literally have investors from all parts of the world. And we have huge institutions that are now actively buying loans on our platform. So the likes of HSBC, Nomura, Citibank, uh, and most recently the National Australia Bank, big institutions buying in big volume. Uh, but we also have retail investors. So we have a retail bond program that we listed on the London Stock Exchange, so retail investors can invest. We also have a fund that we operate out of Luxembourg. And this, this, this very wide universe of investors are matched and managed with proprietary technology that we've built in-house, which allows us, again, to manage that in a very efficient way. To show the institutional grade uh, of the, the, the lending that we're doing, uh, we recently securitized uh, part of our buy-to-let portfolio. We've got a AAA rating on that from Moody's and Fitch. And as we've scaled the platform and we bring more investors onto the platform, we're actually driving down our cost of capital. So our cost of capital now in our long-term book is actually cheaper than if we were a small deposit-taking bank. So it kind of raises the question, why would you want to be a bank? Why would you bother? Uh, we can be far more nimble and far more competitive without being a bank. And actually, I think if you were going to build a mortgage lending business in this country today with a blank sheet of paper, you would try and build our business. Now, where we are, despite having started really slow as a business, we've now lent over two and a half billion pounds. Uh, we're lending over a billion pounds a year. Uh, and we're growing at a solid pace, 75% uh, year on year. Some other metrics, we've raised over 1.8 billion pounds for our business. But importantly for us, we're a profitable business. So we've been profitable for the last five years, and that's part of the DNA of our business. I think as we've been building our business, my co-founder and I have often scratched our heads when we see uh, the smartest investors out there pouring hundreds of millions of pounds into businesses that seemingly aren't even worth the amount that's being invested. You know, we see recent instances where when it comes to judgment in the public markets, it can perhaps almost be worthless trading at cash. That's not the way we've built our business. Now, also having raised 1.8 billion pounds, we've actually only raised 17 million pounds of primary equity in building this business. We've only raised that in the latter years. And I guess from, from our perspective, we think that's the way that a business should be run. It should be profitable, shouldn't be about just blowing money at, at, any, uh, at any cost. And I think you know, it's only a matter of time until the regulator starts to look at this. So fintech startups that seemingly only have a business model around raising capital and acquiring customers is nonsense. Um, and I think you know, we're often told that, well, you're profitable, so you're not growing fast enough. Well, I think it's only a matter of time until the regulator starts to look at this and require businesses to be financially viable uh, in order to be a, a regulated financial services business. Business. But the best part about the 17 million pounds of primary equity that we've raised is that we haven't even spent it. So it still sits on our balance sheet along with rolled up uh, profits that we've accumulated over the years. And I think the reality is that the DNA of our business is fundamentally different to a startup that's had millions of pounds thrown at it in the early years. We're ultra competitive, ultra efficient, and we've learned how to build a business from the ground up. And we all love to talk about founder-led businesses, which is great, but we're a founder-led and founder-owned business. So we own over 70% of the business, my co-founder and I, staff about 10%. And you're not gonna find a business 11 years in that has quite the financial incentive that we have as a business as we go about trying to dominate in the market that we're actively working in. And so, if we look across the landscape of financial services, there's clearly different verticals where lots of interesting things are happening. Uh, technology is disrupting different parts of the market. When we look at property finance and mortgages, it's hard. Uh, it's bloody hard. Uh, and uh, I think the reality is we think that the DNA of our business and the setup of our business actually positions us extremely well to be the player that will win in this space. Thanks very much. <laughs>